evening or good morning as it is here um, it's 20 past midnight and I succumbed to the Aliexpress 1111 sale and I bought a very cheap guitar pedal kit now normally I'd, I like to get my pedals from guitarpcb.com but this one including the box and all the components here in this box um, was less than £10 so I thought well why not give it a go let's have a go with it see how it works um, inject some signals put them on the scope and basically have some fun building it maybe a little bit of chat while we're doing it and um, generally we can you know get through this and have a bit of fun and maybe I'll learn something as well as you guys um, it's an interesting way of biasing an op amp looking at the circuit I have already had it out of the box so uh, if you're interested stick around uh, and we'll get to it see you shortly okay so here we are on the bench and uh, I've got the bits out of the box and the first thing I thought I'd get out and show you was the actual box itself um, if I can get the glare off the off the thing from the overhead lights there we go um, as you see it's actually a nicely painted black um, not a genuine Hammond box but obviously a, a die cast similar sort of box and um, the insides uh, again a bit glary because of the new bright lights but uh, just a die cast aluminium box ready to uh, to take uh, all the components and all the bits so what I'm going to do, there you go, nice and shiny on the bottom, that's where you'd stick your velcro or your, your rubber feet depending on uh, what sort of surface you're, you're going to use. Um, all the holes on this one are pre-drilled, um, so that's that part of the kit. Let's put that out of the way because we don't want to scratch or damage that. Um, and let's get on to what you get in the kit and uh, to be quite honest I've, I've bought this guy's kits before um, and you know they're great you know for what you pay for them they are very good um, you get your, your bits of wire in different colors um, you get your circuit board you get a, a sheet of sort of directions which is the best way to show that probably that way around um, obviously you know photocopy of a photocopy of a photocopy but it just basically shows you where everything goes there's no circuit diagram um, and sometimes that can be a hindrance if you're trying to fault trace but um, to be quite honest if you can read that you can read the silk screen on the board. Um, I know it's looking a bit dark now, so I'm going to turn them back up a bit. Uh, maybe, maybe not. Maybe get a bit more or less glare off it. Take the shadows out. Um, up we come. There we go. And uh, yeah, again. So there's the glare off the board. You you can see the silk screen is actually very good. Um, I'll bring it up to the camera and focus it in for you. There you go. Um, nice and clear, easy to read. Let me turn the board over and you can actually see that it's um, it's a very neat PCB. It's already shaped to match the insides of the box at one end and the switch is going to hold the board in position. So the whole thing is going to mount with the switch here. Let me focus you back in with the switch here uh, as the support for the PCB and all the components. Now that is actually a, a pretty rigid structure. Um, I, as I say I've done this sort of thing with these sort of kits before. What I have noticed is the op-amp um, socket is not your usual cheap and cheerful but it's actually one with turned pins. So a better quality socket. Um, whether the four double uh, the four double five eight is the best op amp to use. Um, I don't know. You can experiment because it's in a socket, and if you don't like the sound of that particular op amp, um, change it for something else. 
there's nothing stopping you doing that. Um, transistors are just generic uh, transistors. You've got poly caps, dependent resistor. Um, what else have you got? The screws for the box. You've got the knobs, you've got the power jack, you, you've got everything you need. You've even got the internal battery connector. Oh, that's a screw out of the end of one of the knobs. So you even get four rubber feet to go on the bottom. Um, as I say, this whole kit came to less than £10 with free shipping. Um, yes, I know it was their 1111 sale, um, but normally the guys' kits don't work out at much more than that anyway. They're not a horrendous price, they're usually very, very reasonable. Now, it does appear that on one of the knobs I am missing a small piece of brass. Now, I'm just wondering if it's caught in a... Now, there it is. Come on. Because uh, the screw has been turned out too much. Now, in the past I haven't used the fixings that come with the the kits because I basically I preferred something else um, you know but I think this time I'm just gonna go with what we've got and and build it as is there we go that's in a bit better let's just do the other one just to make sure and uh, yeah for this build you won't need anything more complicated than um, your soldering iron, your cutters, um, in my case my glasses, and occasional reference to the piece of paper. This guy's kits actually come with the resistors pre-marked. I'm going to take these out of the bag because again they glare off the lights. With this guy's kit, as you see, pre-marked resistors, they've got the values already there, 100k, 1 meg, 47R, you don't even need to to read anything. This is actually, you know, a very very simple kit build. Um, I, don't, I don't know whether it's worth actually just soldering it up and uh, jumping straight to the straight to the um, testing part of the video. Um, you know, uh, who wants to listen to me? waffle and who wants to watch me solder things together um, yeah I'll tell you what I'm gonna put it together then we'll go through the scope work and uh, we'll run from there so there's a cheap and cheerful kit I've already been waffling for nine minutes can't believe that so here's a cheap and cheerful kit it's ready to build and all you've got to do is put it together uh, I'm just going to check my focus again And I'm okay, so now we're back, and uh, here we go. Um, what you can see on the bench is the input from the signal generator going to the output, which is on the oscilloscope trace, which will be in um, either that that corner up there or this corner over here. I haven't yet decided which way I'm going to put it. But um, what you've got, at the moment the effect pedal is off and on the scope that you can see, um, the two traces are actually identical. Now I can move one onto the other. Um, let me just stop pushing the wrong one and I'll be able to move one to the other. Um, there we go. Right. I can bring that one to the middle and bring that one up and as you see they are actually an identical trace what's going in is exactly what's coming out so it's definitely true bypass um, there's no argument with that that's you know what's in is in and what's out is out so let's just separate the two traces again and the top one is the output this one is the output, the one that I'm wobbling up and down, and this one is the input. Okay, so let's set them there. Now, 
currently there's quite a lot of level going in so I can bring the level down a little bit and we can see how the thing behaves um, this is the sort of level that you would expect from uh, a guitar around about the uh, half a volt and again if I actually move them into into the sort of uh, between the graticules on the scale there um, you can see that uh, the each of these grat each each of these divisions is half a volt, so we're dead on half a volt as near as well you know as near as um, coming from the signal generator going through the pedal. Um, so what I'm going to do now is let's just check that everything is turned right down to nothing and hit the fire button and. What's happened now is that the output has disappeared. Um, the input is obviously still there. So the first thing we've got to do is actually turn up the volume. And the volume allows us to... Uh, if my jack isn't a bit scratchy there. Um, the volume allows us to just bring the level back to what it was. Now if I slowly increase the sustain... The sustain you can actually see that because of the compression you are actually getting a higher signal and then it peaks back again because it's sustaining that note if I work it up and then it will slowly drop back until there's almost the same signal again as there was before and it's quite um, hard to see let me see if I can bring it up with a slightly higher level and let's turn the sustain down so that's the input signal but at this time it's if I set the bottom trace to the same level there's the input and the output signals together if I throw up the gain you'll see that the output goes right up and then as the sustain dies off it slowly returns back to a different level back to the compressed level so it's slightly larger but it, it's the same sine wave um, now you'll notice that there's uh, inversion on there now that's because it's gone through the op amp now what I'm doing at the moment is I'm turning the volume down so that the output is pretty much the same as the input again on the two pedals and as you can see one is now inverted completely opposite to the other one so I'm going to bring the volume let's just make it so that they're exactly the same again so there you have the two opposite signals um, your ears won't hear that all that you'll hear is the same note you won't know that the signal's been inverted but obviously electronic equipment can tell that it is and uh, measuring devices and what have you so um, it's just one of the features of uh, you know the test equipment that it can actually pick up the fact that the the phase is different between the the input and the output and that's because it's gone through a gain stage so again if I whack up the sustain level oh it's already whacked up if I drop it down to nothing and then whack it right up you see it bounces high and then slowly comes back and the same would happen if I actually change the frequency. You can see that they're both changing, but the output signal is doing effectively the same as a wah wah pedal. Now, the actual traces are both set at um, round about a middle A, um, 440 hertz, standard tuning A. So you, you can see that the frequency is you know, well within normal guitar range and as I wobble the frequency up and down you'll see that the top trace varies and, and that's just the effect of the sustain. So we know that works, um, the only thing left to do is for me to find a guitarist and actually play it um, which at 3 o'clock in the morning is unlikely to happen because I think all of my guitarists are asleep at the moment upstairs and I don't think the neighbours would like me firing up any of the amps um, and starting practicing a gig 
uh, with a compressor on um, at this time of the morning. So I'm going to leave it at this point and uh, hopefully we'll come back um, with an audio test so that you can actually hear the difference when I mic up one of the amps and you can uh, see the actual sound rather than just the, the screen uh, displays that are on here. So at this point I'm going to uh, wrap it up and we'll go into the uh, playback test in a little while. Thanks very much. Right, hello there. Right, here's the last part of the video, the audio test. And for that I have brought in this um, very, uh, not well, not very good uh, torque bass amplifier. I say not very good because it's pretty rubbish to be quite honest. But it's better than me trying to fire up one of the big valve amps. Here's the compressor pedal. So you've got the input to the amp coming from the output of the pedal. Um, the power is supplied on 9 volt from the bench power supply and this green lead is, when that doesn't fall over, go on, stay there, sit, is connected to my eldest daughter's 1980s Warlock. Um, yes, it is a 1980s one and guess what? I can't play guitar. But I can use... Um, this pick which I found in the washing machine to make a noise with it so if I strum you get the effect and now that is the the raw I'll silence that that is the raw sound of the guitar into this amp I don't know how well the mic is picking it up but hopefully it should be picking it up okay the volume on this is actually cranked to the max and it sounds quiet to me, even by my head, so, um, yeah. And the quieter you strum, you can hear that it's reasonably quiet and then you, and you get a big increase in sound. If you put the compressor on, and at the moment we've got a, well let's take it to 12 o'clock and the volume about there, let's just make sure. Uh, right, the first thing you notice is it actually sounds a lot brighter. Um, without changing any of the amp settings it, it it's all to, it, it's brightened up the sound completely. So, um, let's have a look, see what we can do here. Um, playing gently, again with this pick. And you see where the compressor is actually trying to even out the sound, so that between the the lower notes and the, and the harder sort of struck strings the volume remains pretty much constant right across the board so without me being out to play anything um, it's going to be pretty hard to sort of Remember the scale. Yeah, I can't remember the scale. So, um, you know, fat fingers, old fingers. Um, yeah, I'm getting too old for this lark, but um, hey, it makes a noise. And if we just go back to compressor off. gentle strums just get lost behind the the loud strums so yeah there we go
Thanks very much for watching and I hope you attempt to uh, play better than I do. Um, hope you enjoyed the video and uh, hopefully we'll see you in the next one. Thanks very much for watching. Bye bye now. Oh, looks like I've got a repair job to do. God, that's a horrible sounding amp. Thanks very much for watching.